That's cool. We're here with the develop with one of the developers of Shapeshift Dungeon. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself, Sky? Yeah, hello. Uh, my name is Sky. I am the lead uh, designer and programmer on the game. And this was a student project over the course of like four months, one semester, uh, with 14 students. So we, we had a lot of people working on it all at once. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, what was your role? What was your role throughout the development of the game? Um, I was the designer primarily, so I just figured out like all the initial pre-production stuff for the game and how we were going to go about developing it. And then I worked with a producer um, to pick out our team members from the class and just work on it. Yeah, and as I said, I was also the lead programmer, so I did a lot of the in like in engine stuff, just like testing out people's assets that they finished and. Uh, I had I, I did the pl the entire player controller was me, um, yeah. and like one or two of the enemies. But the rest of the programming is my team. Awesome, and uh, I see that you used uh, Unity for this game. Yep, that's correct. Uh, awesome. Let me let me get it uh, open really quick. There's Norton is deciding to be yep. annoying about this. Yep. While a new is right. opening that, I do have a you know some few a few questions here. Uh, what was one of the inspirations for the games If uh, while we're opening up the game here? Yeah, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. So um, the main inspiration was that I knew I wanted to make a roguelike, but I wanted to keep it in scope. I, I knew that I would have a limited development time and resources, and this is obviously a student team, so we don't have 24-hour development, right? <laughs> not Everyone's not working full hours, uh, we, they have other classes and stuff to work on. So in order to make it in scope, I came up with the idea of doing a one-room roguelike, meaning the mm -hmm. entire roguelike takes place within one area, and then it shapeshifts into new layouts as you play. Um, and that concept I made a little demo for, and it looked really cool. People liked it, and we went from there. There we go. The game should be running right now, so let me stream it. Awesome. Uh, apologies, Norton was being very. Here we go. Yeah. Sorry about the enemy hanging out over here. Yeah, it's it's a little bit slow. Oh, it's loading. Around. There we go. Is it working out? Yep, you're good. Yeah, sorry about that. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, super good. sorry. Uh, so I guess we'll begin. So well, let's hit start. I I will say that level transition is really really good. Yeah, no, it's very smooth. Yeah. And we'll start at the beginning, four zero. So you said that this was a kind of it was a it was a project for one of your classes. Yes, this is the capstone senior 
project for our game design program at CSU Chico. Oh, that's awesome. I think this yep. is our second roguelike that we're playing. Nice. Today. So this will be fun. I played it earlier and it had it was Ooh. it was re it was really fun. Oh yeah, the it's loading for me right now. Uh. Yeah. It takes it takes a minute um, to yeah, do the initial yeah. <laughs> load of the make level. Make sure that we're showing off your game in the best light that we can here. But yeah, no, it was really mm -hmm. smooth when I played it. Um, mm -hmm. Now that it's loaded, it's like running perfectly. Mm -hmm. I love how res I love how responsive it is. Oh, like the fact that yeah. there's like instant turning and everything. It took a long time to fine tune the character to get to the point where it is. Um, Hades was definitely a really strong inspiration for character movement and like feedback times and that sort of a thing. Nor the fact that it just fell off trying to get to the level one. <laughs> we won't talk about that, it's okay. Um, <laughs> Hades has been, I think Hades has been like a roguelike, like a huge inspiration or huge force for roguelikes recently. So. I can see the I can see the inspiration here. It's isometric. It's um, it's like combat focused. Yeah, this isn't a full isometric. It's mm -hmm. uh, more third person, but mm -hmm. um, it definitely still has the same like three D roguelike elements to it. Um, and a lot of the character movement is directly inspired. I mean, you have combo attack. You have a dash. Um, Instead of having full revives, you have full heal potions. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. Okay, good to know. That those, yeah, I, I'm realizing now that those are full heals, so I probably shouldn't use them when I'm at 29 health. <laughs> yep, <laughs> yep. Be a little bit of a waste. When developing this game, what what was like kind of your highlights? And if you if you have any lowlights of like development, just your favorites and least favorite parts. Okay. Um... I mean, there's a lot of things that were really fun to work on. Uh, from the offset, we got a good start. These stone tiles that you see throughout the game were done before our first build. Like, it, they, the look of that was there from the beginning. Um, and the lava that we'll see later on, we have a shader for that early on as well. Just our modelers did an awesome, awesome job uh, doing all the environment work throughout the project. Like, the lava did look gorgeous from what I saw. It looked really nice. Yeah, yeah. And some of the stuff that's here, like these grass tiles, um, weren't even in the, the production plan at all. It was kind of like a, hey, we want a grass prop we can decorate our levels with. And then the modeler decided to make it fill the whole tile. And we liked it so much, <laughs> we <laughs> now we have grass levels in the beginning. And, and it really helps sell the like delving deeper into the dungeon as you move through right like kind of getting more like you start off with something familiar with grass and then it gets more and more more, more interesting as things go on like more and more yep um one of the harder parts of the game was definitely having so many different unique enemies um mm -hmm. there's like seven different enemy types uh and Getting them all to have unique functionalities and work with all the different levels of the game uh, was really challenging. So right. that uh, it worked out in the end, but there was definitely more crunch than there needed to be to make that happen. Okay. Um, so if I were to change anything about production, it would have been uh, to better scope that out and figure that out ahead of time. When you were um, when you were like working on the game, how okay, that's actually a good segue to the next question. Um, how did you kind of like initially plan things out for the development cycle? Like a uh, last in the last we talked about um, in one of these recent ones we talked about Trello and using that mm -hmm. to kind of make sure the development went uh, according to a set schedule. Yes, uh, how we did that also work used, for you? Yeah, we also use Trello. Um, mm -hmm. So at CSU Chico, the primary like hot method of game development is to use Agile Scrum, if you've heard of that. Um, so Agile is just a production method that just says, you know, we want to produce things efficiently and um, not waste time, uh, like, planning things out too much. But we also want to do enough pre-production so we have a plan, right? <laughs> if you go in with no plan, it's it's going to be <laughs> extremely rough. You're so going to be, you need a good be finding out problems along the yeah, way. Yeah. And solutions exactly. at the same time. Um, 
And then the Scrum part of things is saying that we use a two-week development cycle. Uh, Scrum can actually be less time than that. Um, how long a sprint is uh, can, is decided by the team, but we use two weeks. That works for us. And essentially, we take that two weeks to uh, assign as many tasks as people are comfortable with, and then they work on those tasks for two weeks, and then we make a build, and we do some analysis. We say, okay, here's where the game is at. Uh, here's what works, here's what doesn't. What needs to change? What needs to be cut? Is there any features we need to add? So we do a full analysis of the game every two weeks, essentially. And then we uh, add new tasks and um, assign new tasks and go from there for the next sprint. I'm hearing the... I'm hearing a sudden change in music and else, and I really like that that too. This um, this track feels much different in like a pretty considerable way, so... Yeah, um, so actually the first track um, and a lot of the tracks in the game are found from a creator that I've been using a lot of his work for, uh, Eric Matthias, and he's great. But um, he's just some guy that I have found on the internet, right? <laughs> Versus this track that you're hearing now, um, it's actually great because I worked on a game jam uh, with some international people, okay. and this composer is from France. So he uh, created this, or not the, the track you're hearing right now, this one's Eric Matthias. And then uh, Leaflet uh, is how he goes for the French creator and he, or composer. And yeah, he did this track and the one you'll hear starting at floor 10 for the combat. Okay. Uh, Jason, how's your time right now? Doing pretty good. So, yeah. So, was there any content that throughout the game that you had to uh, remove or cut? And was there anything that, conversely, you kind of added as you went along with development? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I definitely overscoped the monsters. As I said, they were a constant, uh, like, work in progress. Um, I had three monsters that got cut in total. I was trying to do a thief uh, who would steal items from you, oh. and anima animated armor uh, that you would like try to knock it back into walls or pits in order to actually deal damage to it and an ogre type enemy so something a little like beefier heavy hitting really threatening kind of but like you have to prioritize all, that probably yeah and all of those enemies were cool in idea but way too large in scope to feasibly pull off that makes sense especially for like a semester long project you don't want to it's it's probably better to have enemies like the ones that are designed right now where it's like you can you can see a clear ethos Behind each one, and each one is each one is unique. Like, uh, I have to take a completely new strategy for every for everything that I've had to, everything that I've encountered so far. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good question. How did you balance kind of the uh, damage, the movement speed, and uh, the gem drop rate? How did you how did you approach the balance of that? That's a great question. <laughs> These are all really good. Um, so. Items I knew from the beginning that they were going to be a little bit tough to balance. Um, so this, in order to fully have like two items per room, I had the the one random item from a pool and then a stat potion upgrade. So the stat potion upgrade is ever present, and yeah. it allowed us to have more items without having more items. If that makes sense. Because right. one of the options is always going to be a uh, one of the options is always going to be a stat increase. Yes, yeah. So you're always given that, and then one other item. Mm -hmm. And so we had half as many items to create, essentially, Which, by doing that. That's, that is a smart approach to that. Yeah. Um, and also and I could the, see, like, some of them. Like, I think with the last one, I just got lead armor. Which I yes. didn't pick up because I, I like my movement speed. Which you can mm -hmm. tell by me jumping off the edge twice. <laughs> yeah, um, that what you just found right there is a constant problem that uh, still was never fully resolved, which is depth perception, right? When you're in a 3D environment like this, it can be hard to, like, see what level you're at, and, like, it was hard for you to tell that there was a wall there and you needed to go around. Right, um, like, that's... We, that's we a did a, this game, yeah, we did adjust game. a lot of map designs to fix that, but clearly we didn't do our jobs perfectly. <laughs> I still think that, like, it's, it's still it's still solid. Uh, I definitely... Yes. 
I think it's, it's definitely more confusing the first time around than the second time around. Because yeah, yeah. when I was first playing, I was like, why can't they get to this object? But now, I, <laughs> but then I understood like, wait, there's a there's a height difference. I'm dashing into yes. a wall right now. Yep. That is why. Um, as far as balancing, say, the stat potions, um, so you'll notice that as you take a stat potion, uh, with exception to the health upgrade, the speed and the attack, uh, the percentages that they increase actually go down over time. Yes, and that was to dissuade players from just taking exclusively the same upgrade over and over. Like, clearly people are going to want the attack upgrade, right? That's appealing. But if you take it a number of times and its percentage starts going down, it should incentivize you to try out other things. That was the idea. Dead Cells does like a similar balance sign where um, each time you pick up a potion of a certain variety, the buff that you get decreases by a certain amount, which helps with like variety. It makes it encourages the player to there's the lava. Mm -hmm. It encourages the player to kind of like take different eye modifier to take different approaches. So. And it makes it so that you can have a new, um, you can have a, that was the wrong button. You can have a new kind of like play style every time. Mm -hmm. I just uh, want to say that these levels with the lava and the grass and the stone all in one spot are my favorite. <laughs> you this, can just see all the different elements of the levels. It looks, it, it's beautiful. Also, the fact that you can zoom in and out, I haven't been showing that a lot, awful lot, but it's, it's, it's good for like gauging your threats or like how the level is. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess that we we have one final question because we need to be wrapping up. But yeah. that would be: Do you have any messages for any developers watching? Any shout-outs to your, uh, to your team or anybody else? Anybody in the audience? <laughs> um, thank you for everything, um, both you guys and my team. Just everyone who is in game development and like works so hard to make all of this happen is just incredible. Um, this phenomenal project would not be possible just with me or with anyone else on the team it, it absolutely is a, a group effort um, it, it's kind of insane that things like this get to be done at all <laughs> yeah. this, so far this game this game has been super fun i honestly like i had a lot of any, any game with melee combat with the dash is going to be it's going to have a plus one in my book <laughs> And yeah, with that, I guess we thank you so much for having us. Thank you for submitting your game. And um, yeah, thank you. This With this, we're going to be closing off Student Showcase Section B. Next up is going to be the production panel. Look forward to that. It's going to be a lot of fun.